Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen along with the insane Daryl Wayne. I was supposed to bring um, the folk revival cereal to Daryl a couple of weeks ago so you could, he could taste it in advance. And, and I'm ready. And you're ready. I'm ready. And because of the rain that we've had in Southern California, I just couldn't get here. It was difficult. So I've given this to, um, to Daryl. I've given him a bunch of boxes because... David Cantor, our guest, has kindly sent us uh, a bunch of samples, um, and uh, we'll, um, we'll we'll get Daryl's take on this in a week or so, and let you know. Uh, David uh, Cantor is our guest. He uh, has created Folk Revival. He has a background in food, and we'll find out about that. Um, folk Revival is unique because it's made with acorns and as I said to David on our on the Mark, Mark Allen Cooks a few weeks ago, I didn't even know people could eat acorns. Um, I'd break my teeth, David. Wouldn't I? <laughs> um, hey, Mark. No, you you won't break <laughs> your teeth. Um, you, you if you were to take an acorn off of the oak tree in your backyard and put put it in your mouth, you would probably take one little bite and spit it out because it would be so bitter. It's not really edible, sort of like olives, right? You can't pick an olive off of a tree and eat it. It would just, it would be so bitter. Uh, you, you, you would just spit it out. So you have to, in the case of acorns, you have to wash away those bitter flavors to make it palatable. And then when you do, you're left with, a really tasty, nutritious um, tree nut, not you know, sort of similar to almonds and walnuts and pistachios and other sort of you know other common tree nuts. You know, squirrels squirrel them away um, and uh, save them for a rainy day. Um, have people eaten acorns for eons? You got it. So people, there's like there, we we have we have seen this in the archaeological record that people have been eating acorns across the world, across the hemispheres for thousands of years, and in North America, in the U.S., dating back to pre-Columbian times. As you know, where you know where you live, up and down the California coast is loaded with oak trees. It was an important I, I, part, of- and I live in Thousand Oaks. You live in thousand oaks of all places. <laughs> so it was an important part of the, you know, of the indigenous diet. And and today is still an important sort of prized heritage food for many native uh, native communities um, and are still eaten today in pockets around the world. But because of what I described earlier, the fact that you have to wash them and it's it's laborious and it's pretty tedious to collect it's not really done on a large industrial scale. So the acorns that we use in folk revival are they're wild harvested and they're upcycled and they add a little bit of sort of, you know, some a, a little bit of sort of um, nutritional value and sustainability value to our hot cereal uh, lineup. Your background, you um, you got out of college and just started planting stuff. I mean, tell us about that. Um, so I got very interested in food and cooking in college and increasingly became curious about where our food came from, learned a little bit about gardening, and then decided I really wanted to learn how to farm. Now I'm sort of a, you know a kid from the suburbs of New York City. Um, I didn't grow up on a farm. I went to school in the Midwest. I ended up moving west to New Mexico and getting an apprenticeship on an organic farm whose mission, it was a not-for-profit farm, whose mission was really to train the next generation of organic farmers. And I learned everything one would want to know about successfully running one's own farm. And got the training and then eventually ran my own farm, small little mixed vegetable farm. And we sold to our neighbors through a subscription program. And we sold to some white linen restaurants in Santa Fe and some farmer's markets in Santa Fe and Albuquerque. And 
that was our that was sort of my introduction to it. Um, but did you like then, getting out and in the in the in the dirt and and shoveling and I mean, I don't know what kind of machinery you had, but you know, at the end of the day, you had dirt under under your fingernails. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was you know this is it's farming, it's manual labor. It's you know I was young, I was I was healthy. You're I was still lean. young. <laughs> and and but I but I knew then that I didn't want to be a farmer for the rest of my life. I just knew I wanted that at first hand experience. And I ended up actually I ended up sort of working on and visiting a lot of different farms during that stage of my life throughout my 20s. I ended up probably visiting over 100 different kinds of farms from uh, from, you know, from fruit farms to ranches to vegetable farms to, you know, row crops of commodities. I visited all sorts of farms and expanded my sort of education about really agriculture and sustainable agriculture. And then I went back to school and I got a master's in nutrition and and really studied the the like food and agriculture policy at the time. So it was like, I really have a master's in food and ag policy, but it was within the nutrition school at Tufts University. So I moved back east for that to sort of help me make sense of sort of this food system that I was very much immersed in. And then, and then was hired as like a very junior marketer inside the health and nutrition division of M&M Mars, because they were looking for some out of the box, sort of non-conforming, not cookie cutter kind of uh, people to. So biting to into a chocolate bar would make you healthy. Well, no. So they were looking to sort of diversify their portfolio into better for you, natural and organic snacks and things like that. And most of their junior marketers were amazing, um, you know, MBAs. But I had this weird, quirky degree, this sort of food and ag policy degree. And they, it was, I was, I sort of fit the bill for this new little division, which was build uh, health and nutrition. So I landed there and worked on, on this amazing cross-functional team, sort of cut my teeth, learned the basics of marketing. I'm skipping over some other things between, between the farming and Wait. the, between the farming and Mars, there were some other things. I worked at a lower organic food company. I worked at a food co-op. There were some other things that sort of rounded so out So when you company. decided to come up with folk revival. Yeah. Okay. And have developed the, how did you create this product? Obviously you have the education background, but I mean, did an acorn hit you in the head like an apple hit uh, uh, Newton? Uh, and you went, wow, why don't we make cereal? So, so not exactly. I mean, so here I, I, I'm probably belaboring all of my past too much. So if, so after joining Mars, I spent 20 years climbing sort of the marketing ladder. Okay, so for 20 years, I worked for various companies and eventually led marketing, R&D, and innovation for a food company called Dr. Prager's, a wonderful company, best sure. known for, for veggie burgers. Um, and I led, uh, I led those departments and helped really grow that company. And then I eventually left in 21 to work on Folk Revival. Now, at the time, the vision for Folk Revival, and people can go to folkrevival.com if they don't know what we're talking about, but it's a it's a line of hot cereal that uh, they're like single serve cups that are very high in protein, very low in carb, and made with acorns. And and, and they're low in sugar too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's there's no sugar added, and um, so the the vision for this we're gonna started, we're gonna take we're gonna take. Uh, uh, some time out when we come back we're going to start with your vision okay uh okay. it's a 2020 vision uh and very focused so that you could develop uh folk revival our guest is david Cantor. He is the um creator uh ceo and uh, bottle washer at uh, folk revival which is a hot cereal made from acorns it's it's one of the main ingredients and we'll talk about the some of the other ingredients i'm interested in chicory because fresh chicory can go into a salad i just found that out all right don't go away as late night health continues and be sure to visit us at late night health Dot com. That's LateNightHealth.com. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. You're right. That's a hard name to say, Daryl. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he said it was going to be easy. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. 
Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. It's time to tackle a tough topic, one that affects us all. We're talking about sexism in the workplace. The award-winning Identifying the Elephant in the Room series is back and ready to tackle some complicated communications issues again. This spring, we're focusing on critical communication strategies in the face of sexism. Join us as we hear from professionals in the natural products industry who have valuable career lessons to share and real-world experience to discuss from all sides of the elephant. It's time to have an honest and open conversation about the impact of sexism in the workplace and how we can make it better for everyone. Identifying the Elephant in the Room series starts March 16th. Register today at inicibox.vfairs.com. That's I-N-I-C-I-B-O-X dot V F A I R S dot com and join the conversation to be part of the solution. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Along with the insane Daryl Wayne, be sure to join us at LateNightHealth.com, where you'll be able to see a pretty picture of David Cantor, our guest, who is a natural foods industry veteran, and he's created a hot cereal that's perfect for any time of day, and you can even make things with it. You make... um, you make cookies. You can make other other snacky things. Uh, lots of protein, and that's good. Uh, I've got to ask, David, in your experience with, um, say, gluten free and uh, keto, gluten free, a lot of gluten free foods don't taste good. To me, Folk Revival does taste good. Have you mm-hmm. noticed that? Well, I thank you. I agree. Folk arrival tastes good, <laughs> um, and yeah, I think there's. I think gluten free foods can taste very good, but sometimes when they're trying to replace the properties of of wheat, it's tricky, right? There are some 
gluten free breads and stuff, but you know, they're like they're like, you know, they mimic bread, they come close to it, but it's not quite the same indulgent bread you, you know, you or I might have grown grown up with and you know, you, you might have to compromise a little bit on taste. Um, but in the case of folk revival, we're really actually replacing primarily oats, right? Like this is essentially an oatmeal alternative and, and oats generally don't have gluten. They're, I mean, they're, they're sort of, they're, they share a supply chain with wheat. So, you know, you have to get sort of certified gluten-free oats to have gluten-free oats. Um, but, um, we're not replacing something that generally has gluten. So there's no real compromise there. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, I think that uh, some of the other ingredients are interesting to me, too. Um, you've got uh, chicory root. I mentioned that um, as we uh, went into our break. Uh, you know, what was your vision? You said to your wife, honey, I'm quitting my big paying job. I'm going to make cereal. I mean... <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, I mean... I, I and you I have a lot of nuts in here, and I've called you nutty before. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, uh, did she say, huh? <laughs> no, she she was actually remarkably supportive. I mean, I can I I'm astounded, but she was so supportive <laughs> because she well, she's been with me throughout this journey. So for 20 years, I've been sort of working on building natural and organic startup brands for for other companies, and I've valued that experience i've cherished the experience but i've i've really wanted to build a you know a brand from scratch uh for myself and i really felt like by the time you know you know by this time in my life i really felt like i had the wherewithal the the resources the know-how the network to pull it off it's a very high risk proposition i mean most new startups fail like similar to restaurants right most new restaurants fail and i i felt like i had a uh, a better than fighting chance to pull this off. I wasn't, this wasn't my first rodeo. So I had this vision of developing a brand that was all about delivering real functional nutrition to people, which is something I care a lot about. And, and also doing so by reviving and using heirloom and heritage foods, something else I know and care quite a bit about. And let's talk about heritage foods. I mean, okay. you, you told me that, in the past, uh, acorns were used as food for humans, mm -hmm. right? And some of the other ingredients, hemp seed, our founding fathers all grew hemp. They all, right. they all grew hemp. They didn't grow the hemp with the THC. They just grew hemp, and they made rope out of it. They made uh, clothing out of it. Did they eat it, do you know? don't know if they eat it, but I have some sources I can I, can I would love up. to know that. Um, yeah. But there are other things in here. You've got a lot of, you've got nuts, you've got uh, uh, pumpkin seeds, almonds, uh, coconut, chia seeds. Um, in the flavor I've got here, it's a chia spice flavor. Uh, you've got monk fruit. That's the ugliest fruit in the world. But... Um, these were these are things that have been eaten literally for thousands of years other than the chai spice yeah yeah so the, i mean these are really simple ingredients that was sort of um that that was definitely one of the tenets of the brand to really use simple sort of kitchen cupboard kitchen pantry ingredients that many of us uh actually already have at home um keep a short clean ingredient list that's what you know delivers i think the cleanest simplest nutrition sort of the mo the most wholesome foods for people um, and the decision, and that was, that was the vision that was early on to go back to your earlier question was to sort of develop this brand that delivered this real nutrition through simple heirloom and heritage ingredients. The addition of acorns was an inspiration from, you know, again, I've been involved in the world of like R and D and innovation for many, many years. And I, I read about acorns years ago. I got intrigued by acorns and learning about the, the, the history of them. I didn't know that you could eat them, but I started learning that like they are eaten around the world. I actually tried playing around in my home kitchen with acorn, tried to make some some acorn flour years ago, sort of took the idea, put it in on you know on the back burner, and then sort of came back to it when folk when I started working on folk revival and building out the brand DNA, I I was already eating this very high protein, low carb oatmeal that I thought was delicious. And I thought, you know what? 
we can make this really interesting for um, for retailers by adding by adding acorns to it. We could do a sort of a world of good. Acorns don't require any agricultural inputs. You don't have to fertilize your oak trees. You don't have to spray toxic pesticides. You don't have to irrigate them. And yet acorns drop virtually every year. And the, you'd be hard pressed to find like a more sustainable flower out there. It's a way to sort of um, sustainably harvest something from the forest. Uh, yeah. Can you buy, can you just buy acorn flower? Uh, you can't. Not really easily. It's uh, some people are, you know, crafting and do it, doing it themselves while, you know, sort of wild crafting this like um, it's it's not the easiest thing to buy in stores. Right. There's 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 nothing there's nothing in a whole food store today or any other sort right. of sort of cutting edge retailer that contains acorn flour for the most part. Folk Revival is really the first brand to bring acorns to market across the u.s and how did you get the name folk revival is it going back in the past or is that the idea yeah sort of i mean the folk sort of speaks to the human nutrition part right folk people um human nutrition and the revival speaks to the part of the mission the other side of the mission which is reviving these heirloom and heritage ingredients and when you put them together folk revival it sort of rolls off the tongue it's a, it's an expression a lot of people are familiar with if you do a search for a folk revival we should probably show up near the top of your search results but you'll get thousands and thousands of hits because everyone or many people are familiar with the term of folk revival which i thought it was like the mamas and papas yeah i know so <laughs> it's so it, th th there's that sort of double entendre a little bit got it and um when you started making this did you uh, feed it to your kids and get their input yeah, so I have one daughter, and she likes it. She's not an oatmeal fan, but she eats Folk Revival. So the thing is, is a lot of people don't like oatmeal because it's sort of mushy and a little bit like baby food and, you know, very smooth and sort of mushy. But Folk Revival, as you know, is not really like that, right? There's all sorts of nuts and seeds, and there's actually things to chew. It's not just baby food. <laughs> it's And and I, as I said, I like it. It's the uh, the acorn flour does give it a, 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 a unique flavor and yeah. that comes through. Um, and there's some good things in here. I mean, all of the stuff is good. Um, I'm, I remember my mother um, buying coffee with chicory root because she had Southern relatives and she used to buy a coffee that was half coffee, half chicory. Um, because during the Civil War, chicory was used in the South because it was cheaper than coffee. Well, anyway, there's my history lesson. David, thank you very much. As you develop products, let us know. We want to hear about them. We'll cook with them. We'll talk about them. We'll do a lot. Uh, visit uh, folkrevival.com, folkrevival.com. That wraps up this edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. Daryl, as always, thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, we'll see you next week, uh, uh, Daryl, and people and everybody. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, have a good week, everybody. Most importantly, have a healthy week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.